But to begin the first part, we have a panel of very, very diverse personalities, and I'd like to invite them up. Ms. Dina Saijwani, who represents the Tata Group, Dr. Taral Nagda, Dr. Ketna Mehta, who's also one of our celebrities, Mr. Jamshed Mistri, who is an advocate, Mr. Nilesh Maniar, who is a writer-director, and Mr. Yashwant Holkar, who has worked on accessibility earlier. To moderate our eminent panelists, I invite up Dr. Rupin Shah, our trustee, who is a senior urologist and consultant andrologist and microsurgeon at the Lilavati Hospital. He is a keen debater and a public speaker himself and has presented extensively and published as well and has been honored with the BC Roy Award for his work. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our panel and our moderator. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The measure of a civilization is not the height of its buildings or the speed of its trains, but how inclusive it is of every individual in that society, regardless of caste, creed, ability, or disability. A very important aspect in any individual's life is his ability to contribute to society in a working role, because that gives a sense of identity, independence, social interaction, self-confidence. For people, with disability, often getting employment becomes very challenging. And we have here a panel of diverse experts, as Varsha mentioned, to present from their perspective what could be done to begin addressing this very important issue. So we have limited time. So without much ado, I'm going to give just a brief introduction of each of the panelists. We'll start with Ms. Lina Sahajwani, she's already been introduced, Vice President of HR at Tata Sons. Tata Sons have had a very close relationship with Dr. Mitualur Malini, and Malini is now working with Lina, so Lina has a first-hand experience of how it is. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, you know, of course, working with Malini has uh, been a great experience for all of us. The team is here as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, we do look after all diversity and inclusion uh, policies. And, uh, you know, as we are crafting those to have Malini actually come in and contribute uh, and say that, you know, you could think about this and you could think about that has been wonderful uh, for us uh, because, you know, often we forget the little things which make a lot of difference. Uh, so it's been a wonderful experience having you, Malini, on the team. Yeah, so from a standpoint of what uh, one could do and uh, as an uh, organization, uh, we are trying uh, in various sectors, uh, you know, especially retail and hospitality, uh, where we've got a lot of traction in some of our companies like uh, Starbucks, Trent, uh, which is, you know, Star Bazaar, uh, Ginger Hotels. Uh, so, you know, there we do find, uh, you know, having... Uh, a partner uh, partnership with NGOs where we could co-skill, uh, you know, people who are coming through would be a tremendous help. Uh, you know, we've had good successes. Uh, in fact, some of, uh, you know, Trent is uh, perhaps the leading entity within the Tata group. Uh, Starbucks wants to go next and will perhaps be the second leading, uh, you know, as we speak. Uh, and they are really trying to make uh, uh, not just uh, their stores, uh, accessible. Uh, they are also beginning a lot with sensitizing people who are working with, uh, you know, people who are coming in. So, uh, you know, starts with sensitivity, goes on to accessibility, uh, and, uh, you know, then uh, uh, around the policies that you create with support, which provide the supporting environment. Most importantly, I think, is uh, the attitude of people around, and that's where I think, uh, in, uh, you know, the more people we hire, the uh, higher success we'll see, and that's really the intention that we have as a group. Uh, some of the thoughts that, uh, you know, we had yesterday, we had a uh, round table which was very successful, uh, was to look at uh, channels where we can perhaps uh, provide the right kind of skills to uh, bring in uh, talent, uh, you know, from different NGOs, and that's that's a task we are taking on, uh, uh, you know, going forward. 
Thank you, Lena. As you put it so wonderfully, sensitivity, accessibility, and then employment. And it's wonderful to hear that Tata Sons is taking the lead in that. Our next uh, panelist is a very well-known pediatric orthopedician. He heads the department at the Jupiter Hospitals. He's been a closely associated consultant with ADAPT over the many years, Dr. Taral Nagra. So uh, Rupin is somebody who was known for just a minute uh, champion. And I'm happy that Varsha has been more gracious. She gave me three minutes, not just a minute. <laughs> So, in very short, uh, you know, I, I want to share my experiences that, you know, we spoke about education and what I feel is education is not about building schools, but it is about building skills. And, and that's something very important, building skills in people who are specially able. Second thing is employment and uh, people should not be gainfully employed, but respectfully employed because there has to be respect. We don't want reservations from government. We want to stop reservations in people's mind about people who are specially challenged. The third thing is about, um, uh, about empowerment. So it goes beyond employment, empowering people. People should feel good, joyous, respectful. You know, They should feel contributing to the society as Ketna has been doing. You, know, you feel so joyous when you arrange rallies and uh, uh, fight for people with disability. You know, Nilesh feels that. Malini feels that. So going beyond oneself. But last thing what I want to really say is a personal experience that last time we had a panel here where we spoke about employment and I said, what am I doing? And I spoke to Hussein, Dr. Hussein, who has been alumnus of this institution. And I asked Hussein, Will you, would you like to work with us? And last one year, Hussein has been working with Institute of Pediatric Orthopedic Disorders. And I want to tell you, Mithudi, it's difficult. It's, it's very, very difficult because it's, it's not just employing a person with disability. It is about 10 other people in your organization who have reservations about disability. Those who cannot adapt to the situation. But after one year, Punita is here, and every year she used to write me WhatsApp, you know, Taral, it's so difficult, and what decision have you taken? But now we know that when you employ a person with disability, you empower 10 other people in your organization who are so-called normal. And I think this is something we must put on to the corporates, that the biggest HR exercise you can have is simply having diversity and having people uh, who are challenged, and you see how your organization would change. Three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> and not a single objection. Uh, thank you, Taral. And as he put it so aptly, the greatest barrier to accessibility is in the mind. And the second point which he made equally important that it's one person changing the whole environment. And that is very, very important. Our next speaker is someone who knows a lot about fighting, achieving, and motivating many others. We have Dr. Ketna Mehta, who has founded Nina, which is uh, a group that has been helping people with spinal cord injury since 18 years. She's the editor of the journal One World. She's won numerous awards, including the Shell Helen Keller Award. She's been on part of the HRD Task Force and much more. So it's over to you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, good evening and namaste to everyone. Uh, I would like to talk about from our experiences at Nina Foundation, uh, what happens uh, with a person with spinal cord injury is a young person who's hale and hearty meets with a road traffic accident or has a fall from a height or has diseases of the spine like a tumor or uh, cancer and suddenly the life changes. Uh, which means we were walking, running, sitting, working, and the next moment you're completely, one is completely dependent on everybody else. Now, we have companies who talk about CSR and we have companies who talk about a business case of employment. I want to just give you an example. We've, over the past 19 years, and quite a few of our trustees and uh, friends from Nina Foundation are here. 
when something like this happens and the life altering spinal cord injury occurs the family members have not been trained to take care of a human being whom they saw smiling running walking climbing stairs and how do they rally around all the international conferences that we go to people talk about in india we have a huge family support system and this family support system is makes us what we are today you know and if that can happen why can companies also have that attitude we have people calling up and saying didi hamara job chala gaya because uh, the companies are not willing to take them back this is part of rehabilitation the companies can learn to resurrect a life because financial dignity is a huge huge level up and i think the faster we grow up better it is we are here to help we can help the corporates thank you thank you for that very strong messages to the corporates that just because some productive employee suddenly seems less productive and differently abled it doesn't mean that you shut your mind and your doors to him our next panelist is a very eminent advocate he argues at the supreme court at high courts across the country and he's used his legal skills to fight for the rights of the disabled over many many years it's a pleasure to welcome advocate jamshed mistri yeah thank you so much it's always a great great pleasure and uh, as somebody in the audience uh, asked me said how did you get involved with all this and i i just said jaga memory jog a memory back to uh, i think 2001 2002 when nilesh uh, had met me in chembur actually and i said uh, you know we were trying to set up uh, the resident associations at that point of time and he said you know what about people like us and i said you are absolutely right then it it so then 2002 we you know we intervened in that famous uh, public interest litigation and uh, you know uh, i mean i don't want to bore you with details but you know from getting you know the uh, the gothic structure of the bombay high court to get a ramp uh, you know railing and a toilet block it it took you know a lot of sweat and blood and a lot of explaining to otherwise you know people who you think would actually understand and 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 that's how the journey started and i think from you know uh, the i think seven disabilities to 21 plus disabilities i think we made a huge step in the right direction one major uh, step is under the term employer now you don't even you not only have government you have private employment i know how uh, we've had so many debates on that dr alur that private employment must be covered uh, each uh, state uh, and has a you know state coordination committee each company now has to have a policy and the whole objective is not is this they, that it they, like just as you have universal design in architecture it should be universal as far as employment is concerned what is the problem and uh, i mean we've had uh, you know so many cases i'm just going to highlight just one of them uh, there was a chief fire officer the one uh, who you know unfortunately had a uh, the entire tree falling on his legs so uh, naturally you know he was uh, on a wheelchair and the way this gentleman would have been chief fire officer of our city today instead of that he was the way he was humiliated and the way you know he was put in a one little corner of uh, you know bikala fire station and what he had to endure and then the other major problem which we still face in in under the persons with disabilities act 2016 is the fact that our disability commissioner he doesn't have the power and i think that's another thing that we must take up with the ministry of law and justice to get that changed you know he can only suo moto take up powers and hope that government and other departments will assist 
So I remember arguing before the Bombay High Court and the, the judge was very, very sharp. He said, you know what, Disability Commissioner, sorry, he doesn't have to. I said, forget about Disability Commissioner. I am now before this court and look at what he's gone through. You know, and you know, the other issue about, it's not only uh, within uh, the period of employment, it's even post that, you know, for pension, for other benefits, what are the policies and how can they made uh, they be made universal for, you know, why, why just an ordinary person, anybody, person with disability should, as they say, the right to livelihood is applicable as much to him as to anybody else. So I think we desperately need equality in all this. Thank you. Thank you for telling us where the legal muscle needs to be flexed, <laughs> which is so important, because eventually you need the stick, as Dr. Alur mentioned, in their school inclusion program too. There have been two wonderfully touching mo movies, and we are fortunate to have the co-author of those two films, Margarita with a Straw, which was inspired by Malini and assayed brilliantly by Kalki and uh, more recently, The Sky is Pink. It's a pleasure to welcome Nilesh Maniar, and script writers have to get into the soul and the spirit before they can write the stories. I'm sure he'll have something fascinating to tell us. Actually, um, listening to all you guys, um, something else came to my mind, and I just don't want to talk about movies right now. Um, me too, ma'am, um, talked about today's theme being success. When I was involved in making Margaret of the Straw, before that, I was a person who didn't even know how he would react uh, or talk to a person in wheelchair. So I have evolved in that journey. And in that evolution, I found that one of my cousins, Radhika, uh, my mamaji's daughter, who was co-producer of Margaret of the Straw, uh, she was a child at that time, and she was a bit slow. And in the family, no one would talk about anything else. Somebody would talk about chaman prash and somebody would talk about vitamin D, um, random things. Um, and actually making Margarita with a straw in those four years, I learned and evolved uh, in my own space so much that I could recognize that. And I could go to meet ma'am and say, this is the problem, what do we do? She pointed in the right direction. Uh, there's an institute in Andheri um, where she went. Uh, she would come from Kopoli where she used to live every day, every alternate day to Bombay, go to that school. And slowly and gradually, she had counseling. She crossed her class 10. She crossed her class um, 12 just now. And she had amazing counselors there. Why I'm saying all this is that now she goes to a fashion designing school and she comes home every day and she says, I don't have friends. And this is a constant complaint that she has that I don't have friends. Um, and I, one day we were chatting and I asked why. Uh, she said, um, I'm in a class, I'm slow, so I'm still doing my work. Everyone finishes their job and just runs away. And I don't have anyone left to talk with. Um, at home, which is a big bang joint Marwadi family, um, where time is money and everybody's clocking to do something and you know, find success in life, we all actually sat down to discuss concept of time and success. And how in today's day and world, everything is about just going ahead and getting ahead of someone and, and doing something fast and clicking a button and getting it. It was actually um, to kind of bust this myth of pace and kind of suspend that pace, you know, and find time for each other. So it was not just about, it didn't become a disability, it became about life. And that concept kind of became very inclusive for, for this family to find bearings and, and each other. And in turn, Radhika, um, I have felt has become a happier person. And I feel um, in that little moment, we, uh, we found our little success story, um, thanks to you. And, um, she changed her classes you know, five times, but the first counselor she met, uh, she got married and she moved on and she couldn't be there for her. And she didn't like other counselors. She called that counselor up and she still talks to her on phone. Why I'm saying this is to salute 
and salute the success of those people who can actually become good teachers and good activists because like everyone can't become a good lawyer everyone can't go become a good teacher and activist so so thank you so much for all those who have succeeded and helped us um, you know and eventually tell those stories on screen thank you so much Nilesh's wonderful story has a very important message for employment, and that is that when you're employing someone with disability, maybe a little shift in the thinking, no longer time is money, but caring may be more worthwhile. I don't know why I'm looking at you, you're a good corporate person, <laughs> but <laughs> okay, but for everyone out there. And our last panelist is Yashwant Holker, uh, co-director, partner of Ahilya Group of Hotels, which of course are very well known. We did stay at Ahilya Fort. But what is amazing is that he's founder of a unique portal. We have emojis which make everyone smile. Here's Umoji, which makes the disabled smile. Because here is a portal that helps people with disability plan grand holidays. His group has just published a booklet on wheelchair accessible places in Goa, and he's going to tell us about all the other wonderful ideas he has. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah. And thank you, Dr. Allur, and all of the ADAPT uh, family for having me here. It's a real honor to to be amongst you all and to be especially be on such an illustrious panel. I mean, we have really the people who have been fighting and enabling and creating all sorts of access and ability for, for people and for inclusion in India here. So it's, it's really an honor to be, to be here on this panel. Um, I, I think Umoji and Emoji was exactly the right, uh, you know, idea that we had with that, which was to bring from access, from inclusion, um, by enabling people to, uh, with information, with access, to get out of their homes and enjoy the world uh, by creating accessible environments, it was about bringing smiles to people's face. So you really hit you hit the nail on the head there. Um, I think the the theme of this uh, particular gathering and this panel discussion around success is is such a vital one for. Um, uh, for the holistic approach that one needs to have towards inclusion and accessibility. It cannot only be a success from a legal perspective and getting the government and the law to do the right thing. It cannot be a success only from an activism perspective or from an employment perspective or even telling the stories of, of people with disabilities. It has to be the collective action of this entire, of the people represented in this entire room coming together to enable that success. Um, I, I, I want to just bring, you know, when, when I was thinking of how success, how I could share stories about success in this field, um, one of the stories that really came to my mind here was of someone who's part of the ADAPT family and, and very much beloved is, is, is Toshan. And he was, uh, he was a young man who was part of the Kalaba Center, wasn't he not? The, part of the Kalaba Center and went through um, all of the, the programs that ADAPT happened and had so much support and, and um, people along with him uh, that today, you know, having passed through this, he, he was connected with the Reliance Metro team. And um, it was wonderful because I was following him on uh, on Facebook, and I was, you know, hearing his stories as he in following along with what, how he how he'd integrated. And, and it was wonderful to see that not only had he gone into an organization like that, was contributing actively in you know his role and responsibilities, but he had you know it was always pictures of him with his friends at a birthday party that he had met at work or pictures of him at uh, on site you know with his supervisor and it was just it was it was really a story of success that brought all of these things together from education to the support that his family gave him to the support that he himself found within his own confidence to bust through those barriers, go into a, a, a place of employment and succeed in that way. It was wonderful to see. So, so I think you know, that one story helped me understand that 
you know, he, the one of the most important things that could happen uh, for Tushan was that he was independently employed on his own merit, and he earned that. And it was wonderful to see that, and I think that is how success within employment of people with disabilities can really be defined. Can they feel empowered and independent in what, in what they have achieved to be employed? So with that a small story, thank you very much. And of course, once they're well employed, you help them holiday the right also. way. <laughs> so our panelists have been very good. I think Dr. Nagda scared them into staying within three minutes. So we have five minutes. Varsha will glare at me, but we do have five minutes for any comment or question from the audience. Or anybody from the panel would like to add something? Uh, just to add a bit, Jamshed mentioned about a uh, fireman that you, uh, you gave legal advice to. So we have uh, Tushar Parab, a fireman, who uh, fell from that fire engine and uh, because of which he had a permanent spinal cord injury. So he was on the job. Uh, being a fireman, being working in the fire vehicle, uh, the company said that you are of no use now because we need, you know, when they recruit, they say in the army, etc., tall, and you need to be athletic and this and that. And uh, unfortunately, he came to us. And... Uh, um, we said that, how is it possible that you cannot have any other thing to do in such an organization? And um, the little bit of activism and advocacy we did was that um, have a chat with him and understand what all, because it's not physically possible for us to know what all happens, because we call 101 when there is a problem, but otherwise we don't know how it works. So he said that, you know, in Marathi, that we have this and this and this. I said, great, you can sit and work. And you work with it, uh, you live within the premises. So you need to just come down from the first floor, get a, a you know, a apartment on the ground floor. So it requires a lot of things. I'm making it sound very simple, but A, B, C, D, E. And uh, we wrote a letter and we said that he can work brilliantly in a control room. And he can work shifts. You tell him to work nights, you tell him to work days, he can work. The only condition is he cannot move. In, can, why can't we look at it that way? We, who are not from that organization, can you know, have some creative ideas. I think organizations also need to look at it that way. You know, we, uh, I also uh, work on the other side in the management field, and amount of money which is poured on creativity and innovation and making your right brain think, I think we have enough of it. Let's start using them. The idea that you are no longer useful, it's time to discard you. I th that is the thought that needs to be discarded. Uh, final words, anyone? So actually, <clears throat> we have a, a, a very pleasant task. Uh, we've, we've decided that uh, with Dr. Aru's permission, we're going to uh, set up a, a legal cell uh, within ADAPT, and then uh, that, I think, is something that is very, very important. Now, uh, uh, I think that's, that's a need of the hour, and uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, we should be working with all, all sectors and consider, you know, ev everything in, in a particular way. And quite often than not, it's, it's a perspective uh, of the problem. And most often than not, it is easily resolvable within you know the the work environment. So I, I don't think that's that's really an issue, and I think we need to just keep on putting it out there, and <laughs> enough of sympathy, as Dr. Alur always says. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, the panel for doing a wonderful job in such a short time. They've each given very important, very relevant messages.
I can't thank the audience because no one got up and spoke, but I have to thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. And I think everything that we've said here is summarized by just where there is a will, there is a way. Now we just need to find that will to overcome the barriers. Thank you very much.